Let's start out with some bad news. New York incumbent Jamal Bowman has lost fierce congressional primary Jamal race. Now, why is this important? He lost the New York 16th congressional district primary elections. It's important for a multitude of different reasons. He lost by a pretty fat margin too. Now, I've covered how racist uh, George Latimer was over and over again consistently. Not that it mattered at the end of the day because you, myself, the DSA, you know, majority report, like, and a bunch of other independent leftist content creators are not going to be able to overcome 20 million dollars of sweet sweet apac money baby it's just not gonna happen it's not going to occur that is not going to be you're not gonna be able to put up a fight apac spent through subsidiaries ever even really mentioning israel mind you apac spent more than 20 million dollars in this specific primary and the reason for why they did that is because they wanted to basically they looked at the situation they looked at all of the congresspersons that are like pro-palestinian and they saw one that was weaker than the others, okay? Jamal Bowman. Why was he weaker than the others? Because he had redistricted. He had been redistricted before, uh, which, uh, you know, included a pretty white and uh, and and wealthier neighborhood in his district all of a sudden. And, and ultimately, ultimately, they wanted to make an example out of one person. The other person that they're going after is, is Corey Bush. The reason why they are choosing these targets specifically to dump a shitload of money into it is because, is because, they have tried and failed with Rashida Tlaib. They've tried and failed with Ilhan Omar. They've tried and failed over and over again. So they're looking at whichever avenue that they can tackle uh, and, and make an example of so that like other congresspersons will turn around and think twice before saying some shit about Israel, right? They poured a bunch of money into Summer Lee's. Um, they poured a bunch of money into Summer Lee's race as well. Yeah. Um, Pramila's sister, Pramila's uh, sister, uh, Sushela Jayapal, also lost to APAC money as well. They're going after Ilhan Omar again. Yeah. What? I disagree about your assessment that APAC funding was a big difference maker. Even before the money hit, Bowman was fucked by redistricting that destroyed progressive candidates in general, even if it favored Dems. Wait, what? No, dude, dude, you're f crazy. Come on. I think 20 to 1 outspending the... F Dude, this is a historic amount of money that they dumped into this race. You're out of your mind. The redistricting put him in a precarious situation, which made him a weaker candidate. That already made him a weaker candidate. That's precisely the reason why they dumped a shitload of money. You're out of your mind if you think that money doesn't make a ginormous impact. What are we talking about? If that was the case, why the f did they dump $20 million into a primary race? This is a historic amount of money. This is a historic amount of money being spent on a primary by a right-wing group. APAC is a right-wing group. They are funded primarily by Republicans. It was pretty clear that the redistricting was to defeat progressives over getting more seats for the Democrats out of the New York delegation. It's a major scandal that costed them control of the House of Representatives, yet none of the centrist Democrats seem to care that they gave national power to fascist Republicans. Centrist Democrats pretending that money doesn't matter in elections is hilarious. co -op. shows how far right they're becoming. Yeah. 14 million was the old number. I'm, I think it's over 20. It is 20 to 1. But you have to you have to understand they are they went balls to the f***ing wall. They dumped millions of dollars into this race specifically so that every outlet, every TV channel, every radio channel, every social media platform you went to, if you were in the tri-state area, even you were getting hit with like three attack ads on Jamal Bowman. And for the record, it's not like the attack ads were specifically being like Jamal Bowman hates Jews or whatever. No, just because it was APAC dumping money into the race doesn't mean that like he lost on the pro Palestinian position. His pro-Palestinian position is the reason why APAC came after him. But of course, when they were running ads, they weren't running ads on fucking Israel-Palestine shit. If that was the case, obviously, uh, it wouldn't be all that consequential. The ads were all classic attack ads claiming that he actually is anti-Joe Biden's administration for voting against the infrastructure bill that separated the infrastructure bill into two, which was the right thing to do at the in time the fire alarm like silly shit it used to cost like three hundred thousand to do an entire congressional race including the general election it was only 1.5 million back in 2014 the amount of money spent is more than the entire swing senate races in previous years the money is insane yeah i work in new york city and play the radio at work there were like five to ten ads against bowman on every day on every iheart radio station the thing is these guys are smart they're going to run attack ads on whatever the f 
works. So of course, if they were running exclusively ads on exclusively ads on like Jamal Bowman's positions on Israel, nobody would give a shit to the same degree that they will if they are diehard Democratic Party loyalists and they're being told Jamal Bowman is fucking up Joe Biden's agenda. And that's precisely the angles that they hit him on. They hit him on every angle. <sighs> Here is uh, Daniel Marin's covering Peter Beinart's, uh, who is great, by the way. Peter Beinart is the editor at large at Jewish, uh, Jewish Currents. Uh, notes that while APAC and co. do not target Congress people of color because of their identities, their targeted candidates skew non-white because people who have a family history of oppression in the United States are more likely, not always by any means, but on average are more likely to identify with the Palestinians because of their own experience. That's important. The third point I want to make about Jamal Bowman has to do with race. Now, it's not true that APAC opposes black members of Congress simply because they're black. Well, you know, which is to say, if there's uh, if there's a really, really pro-Israel black member of Congress like Richie Torres, they're thrilled about that. But it's also not coincidental that so many of the people that APAC tries to destroy politically are black or other people of color. And that's because people who have a family history of repression in the United States are more likely, not always by any means, but on average, are more likely to identify with the Palestinians because of their own experience. They're more likely to feel, as Jamal Bowman did, a kind of moral obligation to themselves and their own ancestors to go and see what's actually going on to Palestinians who lack basic rights in the West Bank. And so when you go politically destroy people you who care about Palestinians, you're going to end up destroying a disproportionate number of those people who will be black and or other people of color. And there's a whole history to this. It didn't start with Jamal Bowman. You can think about Andrew Young, Jimmy Carter's ambassador to the United Nations, who coming out of the civil rights movement felt that he had an obligation to have a concern for the Palestinians and met a PLO representative in the late 1970s. There was a big pro-Israel outcry and he was forced out of his job. This was a warning shot from APAC. And it's not like they hid this. There was reporting on this for months leading up to this election, that Jamal Bowman due to redistricting was in a dire situation in terms of his primary, in terms of his primary, and that APAC was looking for someone who they can make an example of. And that is precisely what they did. Now, it should be noted, APAC is a serial Farah violator. They are literally, it's a foreign lobby. I'm sorry, I don't give a shit if it's actually uh, getting all of its money from American donors. Its goals, its lobbying interests are literally about a whole ass foreign nation. There was an attempt to make the this, uh, you know, Israeli lobby be registered as a foreign uh, agent, a foreign lobby. And of course they rebranded, this happened during the JFK uh, era they rebranded and it you know didn't happen and apac still operates the way that it does as you guys know it's crazy to think that like like there are currently active investigations going on with the mayor of new york eric adams with bob menendez and henry cuellar all three of these democratic party uh democratic party members eric adams being a mayor the other two uh being in the house of representatives in the senate every single investigation is directly directly linked back to violations of Farah and getting money from foreign or organizations in an effort to literally go in and and argue on their behalf you need to understand something they're doing apac shit the f are we talking about the only difference is they're doing it for a country that didn't properly register here's your tweet on israel possibly having to register as a foreign agent uh, agent no it's not gonna happen but i hope how does apac make money to perform these campaigns dude right-wing funding that's it they got deep pockets from the right they got so many rich right-wingers that like are unimaginably invested in the in the israeli cause for theological armageddon justifications if you're an evangelical christian or for military contracts like military industrial uh complex contract financial reasons israel is basically a American state. The Republican Party's largest mega donor, uh, one of the Republican Party's largest mega donors was Sheldon Adelson. His wife is now the largest mega donor of the Republican Party and a close ally to Donald Trump. Sheldon Adelson has made it his lifelong project to, to have a permanent Israeli presence on all of the occupied territories. He's an ultra, he was an ultra Zionist piece of shit. And so is his wife sheldon allison was because he's dead miriam adelson is continuing his legacy anyway um 
Zionist, stop making anti-Semitic conspiracies real uh, seem real. Challenge impossible difficulty. Yeah. What is this? Have been quiet about Bowman, but here's my take. The redistricting was a much bigger problem than the APAC money. APAC spent that money less to tip a close race to make it appear that they can by blaming them for the loss. We're giving them exactly what they pay for. If someone is in a hole and you make it impossible for them to get out, how much blame do you deserve? APAC earned their credit, and I'm bothered by people de-emphasizing today what they did yesterday. Is the idea that APAC pro-Israel money is the only important if it tips a race? Uh, 5149 in the wrong direction. I'm genuinely perplexed by the chorus of actually from savvy politics knowers today. Yeah. I think people are like, people want to come across as like smart understanders of politics. And maybe that's the reason why they're coming across as like contrarians, because it seems like it's too simple of a narrative to be like, oh yeah, APAC dumped $20 million into a race. No, APAC has dumped a shitload of money into other races too, of course, and have failed. The reason why they've never dumped this much money into a primary was because they knew that Jamal Bowman was in a dire situation for his re-election in terms of the redistricting. But of course, money matters significantly. It does. Of course it does. If it didn't, then there wouldn't be millions of fucking dollars being spent on these races. Come on. I don't know what the latest data is on this, but I know from all the time I spent working at the Young Turks and whatnot that like um, there are there there are studies conducted on this matter. Okay, I believe it's like 94% of races back in the day, uh, and that number might be higher or maybe a little bit lower. But 94% of races uh, that have been won have uh, have outspent their opponent. Like, what are we talking about? There is no world in which. Uh, you can, you can just like get an easy, secure, easy dub. Now you might say, well, there's other considerations here. Maybe people don't dump a lot of money into a race that is going to be lost or whatever. And, uh, that, that, you know, this is a, you know, post hoc rationalization, but ultimately money in politics obviously is so significant. That is precisely the fucking reason why it keeps growing and growing and growing. Money doesn't always equal victory, but it usually does. Sometimes contributions flow to the candidate who is already viewed as being much stronger than his or her opponents. Sometimes the money goes to the less well-known candidate and results in a surge in popularity. Even in wave elections, the candidate who spends the most usually wins. This trend is stronger in the House than in the Senate, but applies in both chambers. Like sometimes less, sometimes more, but ultimately, I believe that it's like uh, the, the average comes out to like 90% plus. Now, what's really interesting, what's really interesting about this is what the media narrative will be after this victory. And I suspect part of the conversation that's happening on Twitter is to like undermine Apex influence and the amount of money they spent here specifically because specifically because they don't want to give APAC a W okay to make them come across like a formative bow um but the other reason is because the media will run run with the narrative that like yeah APAC dumped a lot of money here and you know what that means that means people don't want pro palestinian sentiment from their congresspersons that's the reason why Jamal Bowman got destroyed because he was too pro palestinian and they considered him to be an extreme radical person for saying something that like the overwhelming majority of Americans believe okay the overwhelming majority of Americans are on his side on the issue of Israel on the issue of Israel conducting an ethnic cleansing campaign so the so the notion that this race was lost on the boundaries of Israel is ridiculous yeah New York Democrats are a shit show consistently so are California Democrats two of the worst Democratic Party strongholds in America. The most expensive congressional primary in American history is over, and voters in New York have rejected left-wing Democrat Congressman Jamal Bowman. Bowman lost to fellow Democrat George Latimer in a bitterly contested contest. They were divided over issues of the Israel-Hamas war, and Scott McFarlane is with us covering this race. Scott, how many millions of dollars? This was a lot. Twenty-five wow. million. That is bonkers money, and it was particularly bitter. Jamal Bowman, a 48-year-old former middle school principle aligned with the most progressive Democrats in Congress, known as the squad, law support. It's crazy. It's like, dude, I f hate this so much because it is like everything that I despise about American politics. It's all of the worst elements of American politics coming together. It's lobbying money. It's a centrist Democrat winning over a progressive Democrat. It is uh, foreign interference from a genocidal apartheid state that is like openly dancing on American democracy's uh, a grave, basically. And it's so frustrating. It's so goddamn frustrating, dude.
support from voters in his own party. He'd been among the most vocal critics of how Israel is fighting the war in Gaza, calling Prime Minister Netanyahu a maniac, and referring to the war as a genocide. The challenger, Westchester County Executive George Latimer, was fueled by millions of dollars from Jewish American political action groups. This race really raises questions about the political impact for Democrats who are so outspoken against Israel could change some of the focus of some of the campaign. That right there, that's it. That's what they spent 25 or uh, 20 million dollars on. Right there. You see that? There it is. And the media, the loyal dogs that they are, will immediately start barking. That right, I'm going to run it back again. I'm going to run it back again. In terms of how much money in the attack ads went to talking about Israel, I don't know what the exact percentage is, but I promise you it is marginal. Do they go to Jewish districts? Certainly. Like Jewish neighborhoods? Certainly. But beyond that, beyond that, the notion that the notion that this race was lost on the boundaries of, of Jamal Boma's position on Israel-Palestine is an abject lie. The only reason why Jamal Boma's position on Israel-Palestine matters is because APAC put him in the crosshairs due to his opposition to Israel. That's it. None of the attack ads were like, Jamal Bowman loves uh, uh, Hamas and, and hates uh, Israel because he's a Jew hater or anything like that. I'm sure there were ads like that every now and then, but the overwhelming majority of the attack ads were things that Democrats care about, lying about him, saying that he was actually trying to undermine Joe Biden's agenda. While ironically, this dip was literally openly fantasizing about no new taxes on the wealthy. He is going to be a spoiler. He is 100% going to be another Joe Manchin type. Democrats, so f stupid. Who are so outspoken against Israel could change some of the focus of some of the campaigns ahead of November. But even in this toxic political environment, there are new signs voters are looking for some form of harmony. Last week at Virginia... Yeah, that's bullshit, by the way. But they're doing it because it's money well spent. It's money well spent, baby. That's why they dumped 20 million so they could, so that the media would turn around and go, yeah, it's because these voters really did not respond positively to Jamal Bowman's statements about Palestine. Hmm. Maybe the rest of the Democrat should, Democratic Party should shut the f up next time they want to say some shit about f the greatest democracy on the planet. The most moral army on the planet. How dare you? How dare you say anything about Israel being an apartheid regime? How dare you say anything about the genocide in Gaza, even though the overwhelming majority of Americans agree with you? How dare you? You better not open your f***ing mouth. Got to cover Jamal Bowman's insurgent campaign in 2020. I remember telling people about his energy, talent, and sincerity. It wasn't enough this time in the face of endless pro-genocide cash spent for Latimer, who will instantly become one of the worst Democrats in Congress. Here are some George Latimer's highlights. He compared the revelations about Andrew Cuomo sexually harassing women to Emmett Till getting lynched. George Latimer may have broken the law in primary in the primary by failing to disclose his personal finances. In the 90s, George Latimer used his power as a county legislator to try and thwart a court-ordered desegregation effort. George Latimer gave his girlfriend, he's married, not to this person, a six-figure job under him as Westchester County Executive. George Latimer was sued, and it may be still ongoing, over a 2017 car accident on a summer Friday. He was driving his staffer's car because he had so many unpaid parking tickets that he couldn't register his own vehicle. Very unappealing to look at as well. Yeah. Yeah, he crippled someone in a car accident. Great guy. George Latimer also said Jamal Bowman has an ethnic advantage. Jamal, George Latimer also said Jamal Bowman is more interested in representing Dearborn, Michigan. And when people were like, the f do you mean by that? What the hell do you mean by he's only interested in representing Dearborn and even also said uh, San Francisco, which is supposed to be identical to the New York 16th district. What are we talking about? Here's a 70 year old APAC purchase. George Latimer saying Engel lost the 2020 primary because George Floyd's murder had more black people voting. We also had, you called the death of George Floyd on the night of Memorial Day evening. That came one month before the election. And that generated a tremendous surge in the black community's uh, concerns, anger, whatever. And, and uh, the incumbent. Uh, are you allowed to say black? Capital. I'm sorry. Are you allowed to say black? I don't know. I grew up in a black neighborhood. So okay. <laughs> Jamal, uh, oh, George Latimer also came out. If you want to understand how f***ing like racist or slash racially insensitive he is, even in the moments where he was like trying to f 
thwart the racism allegations, he would say things like, oh, well, I got a black guy defending me, so what's up? Because he had, I think it was Richie, T wait, no, it wasn't Richie Torres. It was, uh, 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 what was it? Uh, Mon, it w was it Richie Torres as well? I think it was, uh, oh God, I hate Richie Torres so much. It was Monter, it was Mondaire Jones that came out and supported him. And I think Richie Torres did too, but let me clear, let me make sure. Yeah, here it is. New York Democrats divide over Israel erupts into feud. Isn't Mondaire Jones sort of progressive? No, not since like the last election. Not since the, the last time he was like, he had actual shot at winning anything. No, he, Mondaire Jones sucks. Torres told Axios in a statement that he has a general rule of not weighing in a congressional Democrat who has not weighed in against me. But he added, but Bowman's gratuitous attack on my character might cause me to rethink, rethink that rule. Stay tuned. In a post on X, Torres took aim at Bowman for pulling a Capitol Hill fire alarm last year, adding, his opinion of me is worse than a rubber stamp. It leaves no impression, much like his legislative record. But it was, yeah, former Representative Mondaire Jones, once a close progressive ally of Bowman, now running as a pro-Israel moderate in an adjacent swing district, endorsed Latimer earlier this month. Yeah, Mondaire Jones sucks. Anyway, here's what Chris Hayes had to say about this race. Uh, at, one, at one level, the take New York 16 race uh, result wasn't really about the fact that it was literally the most expensive primary in history is true and important in terms of lessons, but it also, it's an absolutely crazy way to run a democracy. You truly cannot overstate how much money figures in the minds of people in Congress and running for Congress and how much fundraising dominates everything they do. To a first approximation, it is what running for office is. Yeah, Andrew Cuomo also endorsed Latimer on election day. That was a fun, fun additional uh, move there. The collapse of the previous bipartisan consensus and discursive limits is a catastrophe for Israel's position in the U.S. in the long term. APAC did not spend directly on elections until 2021. They didn't need to. Ben Davis with prescient analysis. But now that they are, they want to fucking make it hurt. I will talk about Bolivia soon. Let's continue a with Republican this. Republican who frequently defies his own party, <laughs> got close and is now at risk of losing his primary. And today it's Jabal Bowman who voted against President Biden's initiatives in some way in the past two years who lost Democratic support. That wow. Bowman race wasn't even close either. It was yeah, a blowout. Double double pay attention to that. Yeah. So, Scott, let's talk about Colorado. A controversial Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. She scored a big win in the district that she switched to. I don't think a lot of Americans even knew you could switch districts, but what happened there? She had a real small victory and a real big scare in 2022. And rather than run against the same Democratic opponent, she picked up and moved to a different, more rural Colorado district. She Some physically called, moved? She didn't have to move her home, okay. but she moved where she sought the nomination. nomination. Yeah, his district was redrawn, redrawn to exclude parts of the Bronx where he had more support. The new district also had Westchester, parts of Westchester, like wealthier white neighborhoods. That's a big, that played a big role in his reelection chances, especially in the primaries. And then they immediately fucking shoveled this piece George Latimer. Okay. And so some called it opportunism, but when opportunity knocks, uh -huh. she took it and she romped. Yeah. And she is likely to win in November. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I was one of those people, Vlad, when you said, I think most people don't know you could switch. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I thought God, I to, didn't know you could switch. You, you yeah, had I to physically said, move, but I, I guess you just got to stay in the same. And, for the and of course, Fox News, unsurprisingly, uh, running a pro Latimer running a pro Latimer uh, piece here in an effort to shit on Jamal Bowman, but also shit on the progressives. Once again, bipartisan consensus can also be always be found on issues that pertain to American foreign policy. Here, here's Jamal Bowman. People, what's happening right now with the, the backlash you're facing and what APAC is and the significance of them specifically going after you. So APAC is a pro-Israel lobby. As a matter of fact, Israel is their number one and only issue. I got to pee. They want to make sure that the U.S. continues to support Israel with military and economic aid for all time. That's their objective. And so anyone who is critical of Israel, they uh, target and lobby against. So, for example, when I first got into Congress, I signed on as a co-sponsor to a bill that just simply uh, required Israel to give us an accounting of how our money is being spent when we send our $3.8 billion over there. And we wanted to make sure that that money was being, wasn't being used to detain women and children uh, you know, without, without trial or without charge in the West Bank. Um, when we signed on to this bill, this is a bill that didn't even go to committee for, for markup, didn't come to the House floor for a vote, was never going to even be sniffed to be passed. They sent over a thousand letters to my office 
uh, forcing me or, or, or bullying me into standing with Israel, quote, unquote. They shut down my office to the point where we couldn't even do our jobs. We couldn't even serve our constituents because of their letters, because of their calls, because of them protesting outside the office, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's just one example, right? Recently, um, not only did I boycott the president of Israel's address in Congress, not only did I vote against a bill that said Israel is not an apartheid state, Israel is not racist, I had the audacity to call for a permanent ceasefire, right? Mm -hmm. And so they recruited um, someone in my district, someone, in, a county executive in my, in my community, my district, to run against me. And they are spending more in this race, more in this primary race, than they have ever spent in their history to get someone out of Congress. They have a 60-year history. And they have pledged to spend $100 million to not just get me out of Congress, but to get Summer Lee out, Cori Bush out, Ilhan Omar out, and me out. Summer won. This is why Bernie doesn't call it a genocide. They literally intimidate and bully anyone willing to speak out. Come on, that's cult, brother. What are you talking about? Bernie Sanders literally... Bernie Sanders is is not in like a remotely scary position and neither is AOC and AOC was popping off and she won by like 80 percent so this is is this why AOC cucked out the eight pack what are you guys talking about AOC's also been calling it a genocide what are you guys if you don't actually follow politics all that closely please stop coming in here with shit that you saw on Twitter okay no the reason no these guys say whatever the uh, they believe is the truth. The difference is AOC is incredibly popular in her district. So is Ilhan Omar, pretty popular in her district ha and has been in that district working in politics for a very long time. Rashida Tlaib, similar to that. They're just people who do nothing but cry on Twitter who said that they were happy to see Jamal lose because they don't have an ounce of power. I don't even, I, I don't even know who said that. Yeah, AO AOC won by 80%, dude. What are we talking about? There's a reason why APAC doesn't see that as a race that they can and win and doesn't see that as a race that they need to dump funds into there's a tiktok hit campaign against aoc right now for being pro-genocide i think that this is what this is coming from no aoc has made mistakes in terms of like dealing with this uh situation for sure but the notion that she is like pro-genocide is just wrong and they do they do vote on messaging bills that are sometimes shitty that's it they do glory to turkey turkey a goal nice her race thank god she's incredible i knew she was gonna win i'm next and my election is June 25th, early vote on June 15th. So we need everybody, everybody who's progressive, everybody who care about human rights, particularly people of color, particularly... Why, when it's Joe, it's so easy to see the difference between his words and his actions, but when AOC makes mistakes, he gives the benefit of the doubt? Because I've never heard Joe Brandon say that there's a genocide going on, unless you are trying to serve the top of the hour ad break here with the stupidest take i've ever heard in my entire life because at the top of the hour there is a three minute ad break but if you're equating joe biden to aoc you are literally the craziest person on the planet dude you do it all the time do what all the time dumbass nothing about the ad break you are a freak are you defending joe biden here what's happening are you making a comparison between aoc and joe biden give aoc the benefit of the doubt no i'm very critical of aoc when she does things that i don't appreciate when she does things that i uh, i i recognize as wrong having said that however i look at the broad scope of the commentary of an elected representative and i match it against the average take in congress aoc clears that unimaginably low by bar by a wide margin if you personally however consider uh aoc's uh, uh sentiment like calling what israel's doing a genocide three months ago four months ago at this point if you're comparing that to joe biden who is like personally invested in the continuation of this genocide you are you have literal brain worms do you think joe biden has ever said what israel is doing is genocide what is happening if joe biden personally said a fraction of what aoc has said in terms of israel i would literally be probably singing his praises right now about how unimaginable of a peacekeeper he is what are you talking about because that would also accompany actions yeah there wouldn't be a genocide because israel can't do it without biden using the power of his office to do the genocide exactly it's crazy anyway what have her what have been her actions to stop anything that's happening wait this person is both anti-biden and anti-aoc and making a comparison between biden and aoc saying that they're identical is that what you're saying as a congress person from new york she has obvious limitations to what she can do in terms of it, within the boundaries of said limitations she has done a decent amount in terms of bringing awareness calling it a
fucking genocide. Like, what are you talking about? Do you think that a congressperson that doesn't even have like a broad constituency or not a broad constituency, but a broad coalition within the Democratic Party has the same level of power as the mother president and the leader of the party? Is that confusing? You think that more awareness needs to be spread? Who the doesn't know about this? You know who actually wants uh what israel is doing to be called a genocide in congress palestinians do if a person doesn't know they clearly aren't paying attention and aoc might say it doesn't matter to them okay brother um yeah i i don't know what to f tell you about this okay brad left chatters look at the current u.s congress and go you know who i f hate aoc she shouldn't be in congress yeah these are the this is the same energy as like i i i have to suspect that this is like either genuine mental illness in display or it has to be like someone deliberately engaging in wrecker behavior even though nowadays i feel like it's more mental illness because the wreckers are coming uh for free the infiltrators and the wreckers do it on their own for free i'm asking what she has done actions she has or will take great question brother in a society where the broad majority of congress do not reflect the values of the citizenry in terms of israel's ongoing ethnic cleansing campaign because it is our most valuable ally in terms of like the bipartisan consensus in congress calling what israel's doing genocide is actually is unimaginably outside of the f barrier that i'm placing like the low bar that i'm putting out there devolve into hyperbolic nonsense that's clearly not what i mean what are you talking about lesser of two evils is bullshit it's not lesser of two evils now nah, the split going on between pym and dsa is intensifying right now i don't care dude i don't i don't care about these splits i don't do you want to know why i don't care about these splits because we are ultimately powerless and everyone needs to just shut the fuck up and do their very best prompt the suffering a major defeat i'm just gonna skip this dude okay uh i'm gonna skip the jamal bowman uh fox news article here's what squirrel said also this is very important to keep in mind just so you don't get disillusioned to lose hope this actually wasn't an ideal victory for apac and the israel and zionist lobby yes of course they successfully destroyed bowman but they had to do it publicly and ostentatiously they had to reveal themselves just 10 years before they didn't any bowmans that arose were quietly dealt with no mass media smear campaign Campaigns, no flood in the district with clear APAC cash, thereby making it transparent for all to see what's going on. No, this shows their weakness, which is a testament to the power of those who are going to the streets and protesting and exposing their propaganda and lies on a mass scale. Yeah, not that long ago when Ilhan Omar said APAC money is what guides a lot of congressperson, people literally ate her up. The Democratic Party criticized her, said she was being anti Semitic. Nowadays, APAC is a term that everybody knows that's pretty huge this isn't the ideal scenario for apac meanwhile bro won by like plus 20 this feels like cope no there is truth to this statement which is that apac and other lobbying groups especially apac being like a foreign lobbying organization can't make obvious moves directly in broad fucking daylight because all, all of a sudden more people are gonna be like what the what are, what's going on with this with this APAC funding, with this APAC money? They have to operate under the radar, especially because they are lobbying the federal government. They're lobbying uh, Congress at the behest of a foreign nation. That's huge. Obviously, for the record, you guys know what APAC is because you've been in here for a very long time. I talk about this shit all the time, but like for the rest of uh, the politics watchers, the normies, they don't know what APAC is they've never thought about that shit so the more people know about APAC the the worse it gets for them this isn't the ideal scenario for APAC and Barry Weiss and Jake Tapper and all those scumbag genocide designers freaks pretending they're so happy now no they're scared to death oh my god how did we ever let it get to this point that we have to publicly and openly buy elections now that is what they're really thinking that is our collective victory I don't know if they're thinking that because they're stupid but I I would bet most of those ads yeah no they didn't do it with APAC they did it through a subsidiary called like the democracy fund or some shit of course but it doesn't matter because p enough people are covering this as a uh as a as an apac funded because it is what it is an apac funded race is a double-edged sword as it will also incite even more anti-semitic uh, rhetoric of jews controlling u.s elections type beat oh absolutely zionism does almost as much work as straight up nazi fascists in terms of like creating anti-semitic uh sentiment 100 absolutely 